Hello there, welcome to the lesson. We're gonna be walking through examples of how we go about creating and using views. Now, as you, uh, just to kind of refresh your memory, views are similar to tables in the sense that they uh, are columns and rows that hold data, but they are not stored as tables. It's not actually storing real data. It's actually storing just a simple query. And when we reach out and try to uh, call that uh, view, it's going to run that query. It's going to materialize the results of that query. And then we can just treat it like a table. So let's dive right in and use a very basic example here from our vendor table. Uh, in this very first statement that you have here, we are going to create a view. And the first thing I want to do is just point out a few things. Now, you'll notice that um, the way that we create this is we actually say we want to create view just like we create a table we give it a name but then we create it using this as keyword and this is the syntax that creates the view everything else that follows should be totally something you're used to which is a sql statement so just to be clear i'm going to run just the sql statement part by itself and you'll see that we're selecting the vendor name vendor state vendor phone from the vendors table now, what you can do is we can give this result, which is just three different columns and all the rows from this uh, vendors table, we can give this specific result its own name and call it a the vendors, look, we're in this case, we're gonna define a view called the vendors min, and that is what um, this uh, vendors men view is gonna look like. So I'm gonna run this really quickly, and it's, what it's gonna do, it's gonna create that view. And you see here that it was created, if I go down here and I open up my views listing, I've got a couple other views here, uh, but here's the Vendorman view. And we can open it up and it's got the name, state, and phone, and this is the data that is inside of it. So it's a, a minimal uh, view of the vendors. Now, if I go and select star not from vendors, but from the Vendorman view, if I run this, there it is. So what we're doing here is we still have the vendor table and we have you know, got access to that vendor table. Here it is, right? And if I go back and I just, uh, let's say I just remove this and I just select from the actual vendors table, you'll see this is all the information that we you know, have in that table. But let's say for some reason, I only want to be able to access just a few of those columns or I don't want somebody to be able to access all the columns. We can create a view that minimizes or limits the data that's in that view, uh, in that table. We define it as a view and now we can select from that view and we can give access to people to that view and versus the table. Uh, so again, if I select from the view, it will show me everything that is here. And now I can treat that view just like a table. I can select from the view where the vendor state is California and I can sort by vendor name. And so you'll see here that we can actually um, use that view as a table. But again, remember, it's not actually taking up all the storage and space that a table does. It's just a query that when we say, hey, I wanna select star from the vendor men view, it then executes that query, materializes the result of that uh, view, and then it treats it like a table. And when we stop and shut down Oracle or shut down our SQL developer, uh, that view just goes away and it's stored as a query. So um, that is a, one way that we can uh, you know, utilize a view. You can also update the table that is the base table behind that view um, if we don't define it as a read-only view. So in this case, we just defined this view and said, hey, it's a view and this is the de definition of the view, it's this query. And I can actually go in here and I could change um, something. Let's find, uh, like this is said, it's gonna update the registry. Let's find the data that it's about to go update here. It's gonna update uh, the vendor phone to this number where the vendor name is register of copyright. So let's find that real quick. All right, um, let's actually go, let's see, let's go select star from vendors, men, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go find this vendor. So let's go select star from the view, not the table, vendors, men, where the vendor name equals this. All right, so let's just look at it. And the reason I wanna do that is that I wanna show you what the number actually is. And right now in the, in the view, 
which is basically telling us exactly what's in the table. It's pulling what's from that, um, that table because, again, that's what the view's definition was. It's select star from the vendor's table for those three columns. You'll see there's no vendor phone here. So let's do this. Let's go run this update statement. And instead of updating the vendor's table, we're going to update uh, the table by saying we want to update the view. Now, again, when we say update this view, it's going to pull that view up. It's gonna update that phone, but really what it's gonna do is it's gonna use the view, uh, which is kind of a portal or a window into that table. It's gonna actually go update that table. So I'm gonna run this real quick. It says that one row is updated. If I go back and select from the view again, you'll see now that the, the phone has been updated. So um, to be clear about that, again, uh, you know the table is the base table. It has the data in it. We created a view that can see specific parts of that data. So when we say I wanna update uh, the view, the view passes that update onto the table, does it, and then when we go select back from that view again, again, the view is refreshed with whatever the current data is in the table. Um, and there you go. If I roll back really quickly, and then I select from the vendor min view again, now you'll see that we've rolled back the change and it's not there anymore. And I can just drop a view by simply just saying I wanna drop view, just like I can drop table vendors, I can drop view. And one thing to point out is that when we drop this view, that does not affect the table. So if I refresh this uh, here, and let's go back and let's refresh everything here, you'll see that my view is gone, but my table is still there. And that is because all the view is, just to remind you, all the view is, is simply a query that is pulling from a base table. So when I delete the view, it doesn't delete the table. But if I update the view, it will go and address the update. It will actually update the base table. Unless we create it as a read-only view. And that means that all we'll be able to do is select from the view. We won't be able to update or insert through the view. And I'll show you one of those here in a second. So let's go through a couple of different examples from the book and I'll just kind of break them down just so that you understand what's happening here. Um, in this example, we're just showing you that you can create the view uh, called vendor phone list based on this query that selects the vendor name, contact, first name, and phone from the vendors table. It's also utilizing a subquery, you'll notice. So it's basically pulling all of the vendors from the invoice table and it's gonna create a vendor phone list. So this is all of our kind of active vendors. And if I select from the vendor phone list, you'll see now this is starting with vendor 34, which we know has sent us invoices. It's all of our vendors that are in here, and it's only 34 vendors. Um, the other thing you can do is you can create and replace, uh, you can create or replace a view. So what that does is by adding in this create or replace, um, it will basically overwrite, so uh, overwrite that view. So if I go and try to create this view again, it's gonna give me an error saying, hey, there's already a view created with that name. But if I say create or replace the view, and I have to spell replace correctly, if I say create or replace the view, what it will do is it will create the view if it doesn't exist, but if it uh, does already exist, it will replace it. So I can run this and it will basically overwrite whatever changes. So let's say I change this and I want to take out the, you know, the vendor last name and first name and I only want to pull in vendor name and phone, uh, I can do that and it will just overwrite that. I could undo that change and I could say, hey, I wanna recreate that view. So create or replace is the keyword you wanna use if you wanna just uh, overwrite the view um, and change the definition. But if you don't say that or replace, it will uh, say it's assuming that you're not replacing a view, that it's the first time you've created it. So I tend to just always use create or replace when I'm defining a view. This next example that we're gonna show you really quickly is that it is gonna create or replace a view, but just notice that instead of defining it by selecting from a table, it's actually selecting it from the view we just created, which is just pointing out that you can do that. So here I could actually go in and create a view that is defined by selecting from a view. And I can then go select from this new view that I've created, which is kind of a shortened version of the data that was in the view, which is pulling from the actual base table. Um, you can definitely do uh, anything you can do in a SQL statement, you can pretty much do in a view. If you want to join two tables together, like we're doing here, join vendors and invoices, you can certainly do that. And this can be a view that pulls both vendor and invoice information because it's joined those two tables. You can also use a subquery 
uh, in your select definition. So let's just run this by itself because anytime I see us um, a, uh, a subquery, I want to kind of go run it by itself. So let's do this. We'll go run select this inner select here, select vendor ID and invoice from invoices. And then what it's doing now is it um, it is grabbing the first, it's going to uh, pull the vendors and the most expensive invoices. And then what it will do is it's going to select the first five rows of this result. So here it is, it's going to select these first five rows. And if I if I run this again, that's exactly what it's doing. So if I create or replace a view based on that definition, it's going to now have the top five invoices totals. And if I change the base table, like the data in the base table changes, when next time I call this view, it's going to rerun this query, it's going to materialize that view, and it will select from it. So the view is dynamic. If the data changes in the table, the view will show you that. Every time I select from the view, it's basically refreshing what it, uh, it, you know, what it can get from the table. And uh, these other examples are just showing you ways if you want to specify the names of the columns in the view. You can do that. You can add in this create or replace the in, in, uh, invoices outstanding. But notice here one of our uh, queries that we have here, uh, one of our columns that we're pulling from actually has an expression in it. So you'll know that when we use an expression like this, invoice total minus payment minus credit total, it makes this really ugly column name. And that's not really helpful. Um, so what we can do is we can say, hey, I want to create or replace a view but I want to give the four columns in the select statement, I want to give it this name, these names. So I can go in here and run this, and then I'll go, I'm going to skip down here, I'm going to run this select from the uh, invoices outstanding view. And so basically it's giving it a name. You can also just use a column alias like this, right? We can say invoice number, invoice date, invoice total. Um, and honestly, I think this is a more easy way to do it. Uh, because you know this just adds in a little bit more complexity. But again, if you can think it up in a SQL statement, you can make it into a view. And views are really helpful because maybe, again, you don't want to give people access to the base table. As security reasons, maybe there's a field on there, like, um, you know, Lord help us, a, a social security number or a phone number, uh, like a, maybe not phone number, but like a social security number, uh, um, something really unique, like a credit card number. Maybe you want to give access to some of that data, but you don't want to give access to all that data. So you can create a view that says, you can have access to this table, but not these columns or, and not these rows. And now have at it. You can select from this view. You can update the view if you want, but you're only going to be able to update the columns you can see. Or you can even say, hey, we're not even going to let you update it. We're going to make it read only. And so that's, uh, let's jump down to this uh, example here in the, um, the, this part of the view where we actually can um, make a view. I'm going to skip over the updatable view part, and I want to get to the read only part. So you'll notice here that this is a you know, very basic, um, you can do a very basic select statement here uh, like we have. And you can create or replace a view. And I'm going to run everything here except for this last line where it says with read only. So and the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you this. I'm, if I run this by itself, what I can now do is I can go in and I can update the data that this base view has, uh, that this view has access uh, to. So I could go in and update and set the credit total uh, to 300. And you'll see that I'm able to do that through this view. But if I go in here and I set this view to be read only, now when I go back and try to run this update statement and say, I want to update this credit total to let's say be 100, and I want to update it through this view. If I run it, it's going to give me an error and it's going to say, you cannot perform this action because it's a read only view. So again, for security reasons, maybe you want to be able to you know, grant people access to only look at some parts of a data uh, on a table, and you don't want them to be able to update that. So you can make a view that limits the columns, even limits the rows based on a SQL query, and then you can limit whether or not they're even allowed to edit that data. And that's a very common use case for views, is for security and kind of data protection and making sure that you limit the view of the data and what people can do with it. And then there are other things you can do with views. You can uh, set check options in the, that, and what that will allow you to do is to basically 
prevent people, if they are able to update through the view, it will prevent you from doing something that would um, disrupt the data. For the purposes of today's class, I don't think I'm really gonna go into it, nor am I gonna test you over that, but I think if you read over it, you can play around with this code and you can see what it's doing. And the same thing um, uh, down here in terms of updating, inserting, and deleting data. I'm going to uh, skip over that. The last thing I'm just gonna touch on is, is just the real quick, like how do you alter and drop a view? Again, we've kind of touched on this, but you create the view uh, by simply giving a SQL definition. Say I wanna create the view whatever as this definition. If you want to alter that view, you can go in and change whatever you want, but again, you have to set or replace in there. So I can go in and say, I want to pull all the state uh, vendors from these states, but now I wanna go change that to this. And so again, I'd have to add in the or replace keyword, and I can go in here and change this to whatever I want. I can say, I only want to pull, um, have a view that pulls California. And then if I wanna drop that, I simply just say drop view, the name of the view, just like we drop a table. So that's where I'll stop um, and appreciate you joining me today. And we look forward to, Hanging out in the next lesson. If you have any questions, let us know.